Okay, I'm going to explain Building. the Allies army. And I'm, I'm going to do the storyline mode because it's just a bunch of missions and you have to do some ob objectives. But the gameplay is basically the same thing, the same weapons, but they introduce different weapons and have different tasks. And this is a skirmish, basically the idea of the game is just to blow them up, up your enemy, but anyway. Training. I'm going to make some units and let the computer do the explaining for some of them. And as you noticed, I made barracks before power plant. The reason why I did that is because so I can make scout dogs earlier. And I'm engineers to get my stuff. I'm going to do this thing It's going to explain all the different units for you. Javelin soldiers carry portable missile launchers effective against enemy armor and aircraft. Their special ability is to switch to laser guided mode, in which it takes longer to acquire a target, but grants a much faster firing rate. And these javelins are actually one of the better infantry units in the game, because they could attack air and ground. Construction complete. I have the tools. Though defenseless against enemy units, engineers can capture neutral or enemy structures on land or at sea. They can also repair your damaged structures. Their special ability is to set up a first aid tent, which causes any of your infantry units in the vicinity to gradually recover from injuries. Okay, and I'm not gonna, um... New construction um, options. How can I help? I was gonna say, I'm not gonna use a tent. I never used a tent, really, because I don't, and I don't even see a lot of people using it, really. Building. And by the way, I'm playing the computer on, me, on easy right now. Okay, and I gotta show you how to do the special upgrades. These things, they basically, as soon as the thing goes in a circle, you get another upgrade. Well, look at what we have here. I will enjoy slaughtering your forces to the very last soldier. Ready, sir. Ready, sir. Ready, sir. Ready, sir. Ready, sir. Building. Right. Prospectors are amphibious resource collecting vehicles. They are unarmed and need to be protected. Their special ability is to unpack into command hubs. Other structures may then be built nearby. This conversion is irreversible, yet essential for expanding to new locations. And those, that's one of the advantages of, of allies, is you don't have to make a Sputnik, spend money, or make a nanocore that could get killed, and, and it's more expensive than a prospector. Complete. And you could upgrade them to the second tier, third tier units. But I'm not going to explain all the differences between the countries. It would take too long for just one video. And I'm making a second Construction ore complete. refinery for more money. Because it's usually two right near your main base. Building. Building. Okay, and these are first tier units, all these things I got. I can't make Guardian Tank because I need to make this upgrade first. Ready the unit is under attack. And, uh, and by the way, you can put. Right. Construction yeah. complete. Riot shield. Unit lost. We have to Our base up. is under attack. Right, we have my first pickup. Rib tight here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a rally point here. Enemy units detected. And I can put. Situation. Watch, I'll show you. Oh, you could put guys inside here. It's like this would destroy infantry units if you put one of these guys in here. And if you put a jab in, one of the missile launcher guys in here, it, it'll kill air and tanks better. And this, you have three choices of different upgrades. You could, and you had to go from here to here. Basically, you have three rows. You had to go from the first one to the second one to the third one in whatever row that you're in. And um. So basically you have three choices, but you could choose one from here, one from here, one from here if you want to. And it takes a little bit of time to get the upgrades. It's like a time base, it's not a, um... It's not like you don't have to like kill guys to get a, like a promotion. Like in general, or something like that. And basically, um, I'm, I'm upgrading right now for heightened clearance so I can make guardian tanks and cryoproctors, which are, are like a, an air unit. But I don't have an airfield right now, so I can't show you. So I'm gonna choose surveillance sweep. Our base is under you're supposed to choose it during the beginning of the game, so that I could could have been scouting. See how like Patriot missiles are upgraded now? Could take it out and it's just 
location. The missile launching guys out. They're jabbing. See, now you can see. This is the advantage of allies. Surveillance sweep. You can see everything really, really good with the surveillance sweep. But I think of all three, in my opinion, I think this is the best one. Because this cryo shot, it does tons of damage. And eventually you get the um, economic upgrade. Which you get, it's like basically like an ore purifier if you're coming from Red Alert 2. Because they, co they collect more with every um, scoop. I'll show you this one now. Riptide ACVs are all-terrain assault transports, with room for several infantry as well as a mounted machine gun for protection. Riptides are more powerful at sea, where they can attack using torpedoes as well as their gun. They are useful for rushing infantry behind enemy lines. And another thing about ACV, they're basically anti-infantry, and a decent in water, like if you fight like a um, tsunami tank or a mega tango in the water, It'll destroy them easily because it has its torpedoes. But in the land, it's basically anti-infantry. And the reason is, is because that's like the best anti-infantry you have. Like, um, these guys are anti-infantry peacekeepers. Peacekeepers are shotgun wielding frontline infantry who can knock enemy infantry to the ground whilst in close quarters. The special ability is to switch to using a riot shield, which provides added defense whilst allowing them to close the distance with their foes. Yeah, th those guys are actually very good against infantry, but they're not an actual like, tank unit, you know what I mean? It's not like an advanced against infantry. But allies have the best basic infantry, I think. I'm gonna make one of each to show you all. This is called a Vindicator. And there's a lot of different tactics you could do with Vindicators. Um, and Vindicators are basically like Harriers from like Red Alert 2 if you're coming from there. But they have a lot more armor than the Harrier, so they're a very durable plane. And Apollo Fighter is an air-to-air -air anti jet. It's like it'll kill anything. It's the strongest thing in the air. It's stronger than a Meeg, but the difference is Meegs do area of effect damage. These just do single to single damage, but they're strong. So if you're fighting Meegs with Apollos, you have to spread out your units more. And um, th these guys, the, they have Shriek Rays and Ice Blast. The Ice Blast is the thing that really does a lot of damage. These are really good, really good units. Cryocopters are special support units which can freeze targets. Frozen units cannot act and are highly vulnerable to attack. The cryocopter's special ability is the shrink beam, which temporarily reduces the target in size, making it less powerful and easily crushed. And you can run over guys when you when you crush them, like even in Apocalypse Sync or MCV, which is which is rare. Apollo fighters are air superiority jets, armed with rapid fire cannons that can tear enemy aircraft to bits. Their special ability is to quickly return to their airbase to reload and repair as necessary. Vindicators are close support bombers effective against enemy vehicles. They must reload at an airbase between bombing runs. They have a special ability that lets them quickly return to base to rearm and repair when needed. I'm gonna um I'm not gonna expand right here because I just wanna go through all the weapons now. And that basically, if I wanted to make an attack against a computer, I would, I would want to get some um, guardian tanks, so some multi gunner. These are for air, but but if you put a javelin in them, they're good against tanks. And if you put um, uh, a peacekeeper in there, they're good against um, infantry. So they have multi gunner. It's the same thing as in for, from Red Alert 2, but but the difference is. Um, you got just got different units to put in. Like you don't have GIs, you just have peacekeepers instead. And and by the way, if I do advanced aeronautics upgrades on these guys, they're gonna get way stronger. See this guy? He has only two bullets right now. He would have three bullets. See just two dots mean bullets. But that's advanced aeronautics upgrades. But I'm gonna and high technology upgrade would make my guardian tanks a little better and my. Enemy base cryopackers and carriers 
but I'm gonna show you surgical strike because when I was when I was when I was new to the game I always picked surgical strike like every time because I thought it was the best thing building training a unit is under attack and I watch this. You ha you could hack him. I'm not really trying to play. I'm just trying to talk right now, anyway. And then you can hit five, six, seven, eight. Just kill all the um. While spies are unarmed, they can disguise themselves as other infantry and attempt to sneak into enemy bases on land or sea. Enemy scouts can break their disguise. They can infiltrate structures, causing the enemy base to suffer various consequences. Spies can also bribe enemy units near them to join your cause for a fee. I don't really make spies that much, but um, yes, sir. I've seen some people do it to me in a in a game, and it worked. Building. Well, I got low money because I'm not expanding. If I was playing in a quick bench, I would um. I would get these two um, money things and get a money thing right here and or refinery before I made um, a secondary um, a third tier unit upgrade which is a um, mass clearance which I already have and this is the strongest plane the allies have doesn't mean it's the best but it's the strongest sentry bomb is a well armored flying infantry transport that can carpet bomb enemy bases to dust. They must rearm back at an airbase between bombing runs, at which time they can pick up more infantry to power drop behind enemy lines. And just so you know, it took me a little while to realize this until someone did it to me. The best thing you could put in a um, sentry bomber is a Tanya. A unit is under attack. Building. Let's show you. Put this guy in forward. And this is a machine shop, but it's called a garage in this game. See, these things like two two sentry bombers would kill like just about any build except for MTV. And by the way, I, I'm gonna show you this before I forget. Your construction yard can um, run over things. Like you just run it has grinder treads on it. So it's very strong if, if you're getting outnumbered, you can just run them over with your MTV. And, um. Yeah, it can't. But by the way, since I did it, it canceled my Mirage and my Athena cannons. And see this command hub right here? I could upgrade it if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do it right now. And I could get, like, Mirage and Athena cannons if it was close enough to land and there was a war factory on here. I could make Mirage and Athena cannons. But another thing is I could make um I could make third tier navy units. Well actually I'm gonna upgrade it. Third tier navy units. With it, which is an aircraft carrier. Aircraft carriers and I think that's it. I'll show you in a minute. Mirage tanks automatically camouflage themselves as innocuous objects while immobile. They can devastate service targets with their spectrum cannons. Their special ability is to switch on a device that makes nearby forces invisible to the enemy. Mirage tanks cannot camouflage or fire in this mode. The Mirage tanks are one of the stronger tanks. They're, they're not heavy. LA's don't have any very heavy armor tanks, unlike Soviet and Japan does. But Mirage tanks with Athena cannons are extremely strong. I mean, uh, they're very, very strong. But the thing you have to remember when you're using them is um is if it, if you save your plane Soviet and they get twin blades, the twin blades will kill all your um Athena cannons and Mirage tanks unless you have air support. So make sure if you make a ton of Athena cannons, you have ground support because these guys are fragile. They're basically the right alert. They're basically the Red Alert 3 version of a Prism tank, and Mirage tank is the same thing as in Red Alert 3, but the only di thing difference is they have they have a um, cloaking device, and it cloaks the units around them. So it kind of sneaks up on you, stealth, so it, you know, it could catch the enemy off guard. And here's Athena Cannon, this is the strongest. Athena 
cannons are mobile artillery units linked to our space defense network. They can pinpoint targets from long range, causing a proton beam to fire down from orbit. Their special ability is the Aegis Shield, a barrier that temporarily protects the Athena cannon and nearby units. Athena cannons cannot act while the shield is up. Yeah, and this is the shield. If you're getting outnumbered, they're like hitting you with some kind of like air attack or something, just boom. Yeah, and you can't do nothing when they're firing, but it's it's really is a it's a really good defense. I'm like one of every guy. Training. Cancelled. And by the way, this guy's called a hydrofoil. It's the strongest anti-aircraft in the game. But and the difference is, it's not amphibious. It can only go into water. So um, and that's the reason why it's so strong is because it's not amphibious, and like the um Soviet bullfrog and the um. And uh, um, Japan has a ground and a, and a um, water unit that's amphibious, but that's gonna be a dim video. I'm gonna show you show you a hydrofoil first. Hydrofoils are swift vessels that can quickly cut through enemy aircraft using their rapid fire auto cannons. Their special ability is to switch to using a weapon jammer, which prevents targeted foes from attacking. And by the way, weapon jammer is actually a pretty good, a, a very good um thing. It works very well. You could use it on base defenses too. And the dolphin. I'll show you the dolphin. It's like the basic unit. And the dolphin, by the way, if you had a choice between an ACB and a dolphin, um, and you're in the water, I would choose a dolphin, even though they're both 750, because it, dolphin's made for the water, and ACB's made for being amphibious. Even though ACB would be like things such as Mega Tango, which are amphibious, um, a dolphin will do a better job, but it can't go on land, it's different. And if you and these guys, they have an ability, they're flexible, they're kind of like a sickle, sickles could jump around, but these guys could jump around too, watch. Like if you have a stingray is coming after you, a classical way of using them is when a stingray does that, it's, it's electric shock, it's to jump away. And if you do that, you, you, that means you're, um, you're basically doing a good job if you're avoiding it with, um, with a diving attack. I mean, with a dive, a high jump. The Allied Navy employs specially trained dolphins armed with sonic weapons for scouting the seas and intercepting enemy ships. Dolphins have the special ability to jump up and out of water to avoid dangerous situations. See, like I just told you, how I jumped over that stingray. And a Assault Destroyer. Assault Destroyer is basically, it's heavy armor. I think it's better than a Guardian tank, to tell you the truth. I think it's stronger than the Guardian tank, which is the basic, the basic, um, tank. Oh yeah, and by the way, you know, I high key all my planes. But you had to have, like, a system that you had to make up. So, you know, it's, that's a different story. That'd be an attack video. I'm just trying to show you the units, but anyway. New construction options. Building. Okay, now I'm going to show you. Building. By the way, this is cut quarter rift. What it does is it makes basically the thing like not exist. You could use it as self defense. Now, if I do the surgical strike, it wouldn't do absolutely no damage. And this is just a level one. There's a level one, two, and three for the three different upgrades that are just time based upgrades. You get them the longer the game is played. I already have it, right? Okay, now, um. You need to, it's annoying you here to make a lot of power plants in this game, but anyway. Um, and here's here's his special weapon. And, and the, the, the reason why you would use this if as say um they're attacking your aircraft carrier. You wanna use this thing to absorb the weapon because the aircraft carrier is like it's the most expensive and it's the most valuable um ship in the water. So basically you're basically saying I'll take the hit for you because you're a better ship. You're the most important thing. You know what I mean? I think I already. Assault destroyers are sturdy amphibious warships armed with heavy cannons, effective against armored targets. Instead of using their main guns, they can activate their black hole armor, which automatically draws incoming fire directed at nearby friendly forces. And by the way, these are like one of the better ships in the game. These are. These are pretty good. They're an impressive weapon. And um, I'll show you the. This is the main, main, the strongest ship right here. Aircraft carrier for allies. Aircraft 
aircraft carriers are powerful naval artillery platforms, which can neutralize enemy installations from a...